Got another question on the enthalpy and entropy topic. So this one focuses on entropy. As always, the link to the question is in the description of the video if you wanted to try it first. Okay, so for the first part, we've got three processes and we've got to say whether the entropy change is positive or negative and explain our answer. So they gave us the equation for the third one, but I think it's much more helpful if you have an equation to work from for the other two. So for the melting of iron, that's iron solid to iron liquid. There's more disorder in the liquid than the solid, and so the entropy change is positive. Next one, the reaction of magnesium with dilute sulfuric acid. Well, the key thing here is it's producing a gas. Gases have a large amount of disorder, high entropy, and so therefore the entropy change is positive again. And for the final one, you can see we're going from 9 moles of gas down to 4 moles of gas. So this is a negative entropy change. There's less disorder on the right-hand side because there's fewer moles of gas. Moving on to calculation, obviously we're going to use the delta G equation and use the values given to get a value for the entropy change delta S. Just be careful with your units. So you can see delta S is in joules per kelvin per mole. The delta H and the delta G have both been given in kilojoules per mole. So if we keep those numbers the same, we just need to multiply by 1,000 at the end to convert our kilojoules into joules. The other thing, obviously, is the temperature. You can see they've given it to us in degrees C, but obviously in the Gibbs equation it has to be in Kelvin, so I've already converted it there. So we'll put the numbers in and solving for X, I get a delta S at 0 0.1853 kilojoules per Kelvin per mole, multiplied by 1,000, just putting it to three significant figures, 185 joules per Kelvin per mole. And finally, part C, I think this is quite tricky. I don't know what you thought about it, but uh, hopefully you'll get my explanation. So obviously it's all centered around the Gibbs equation and the relative um, or the effect of T um, on the delta G value as it changes. So you'll notice I've written down two um, scenarios that it can't be. So I'm ruling these out straight away. So it can't be exothermic, negative delta H, with a large entropy change, a positive entropy change. And the reason for that is if that's negative, that's going to stay negative if that's positive. So you combine in basically a negative and a negative. Delta G is always going to be negative, so that would be feasible always. If it was endothermic, so positive delta H, and the disorder decreased, so your entropy change is negative, You've got, that's positive, you've got a double negative, if this is negative, so you combine the two positive terms now. Delta G is always positive, so this would never be feasible. So obviously that leaves two scenarios left, a negative delta H and a negative delta S, and a positive delta H and a positive delta S. So if we look at this one first, delta H is negative, delta S is negative, so that's going to become positive. So as temperature increases, this term's getting more and more positive. When you combine it with that negative delta H, delta G is actually going to get less negative, and so the reaction's going to become less feasible at high temperatures, whereas this one, it's saying it becomes more feasible. So it's not that one. It's got to be this one, but let's show it. So if delta H is positive, Delta S is positive, so that's going to keep this term negative. So as T increases, this is just getting more negative. Yep, delta G is just going to get more and more negative as temperature increases, and therefore this one works. So in terms of an answer, I would write something like this. So obviously delta H and delta S both need to be positive. So I'm saying at low temperature, the delta H would outweigh the minus T delta S term. That would make delta G positive, and obviously the reaction's not feasible then. But at high temperatures, the minus T delta S term outweighs the delta H. That's obviously going to make delta G negative, and that would make the reaction feasible. 